Good morning folks. Autumn is definitely here. It's a beautiful day. Although it started absolutely hammering it down. It was flooded, it was muddy, and I was trying to catch pigs for someone who just bought some piglets. But anyway, the sun's out now. Tom's here, we're gonna do some fencing. Right, so we're in the hill field and we're gonna be fencing all the way down the last two remaining sides of the field, which will make this stock proof. Tom came down last week because he wanted to get this cut, this hedge cut a little bit tighter because in this instance, we're gonna be putting our fence in tight against our hedge or relatively tight. Anyway, let's go and see how Tom's doing. I'm on tractor duty apparently. Oh, nice shiny spirit level. New one? Yeah, it not bad. Oh, did it? <laughs> First job for me is to go and load up with fence posts. I'm gonna need about 100, maybe 120. Now, some of you might not have seen our previous fencing videos, which is when we did the brook, or the secret meadow the other side of the brook, and Tom came down and did that. Uh, in this case, he's gonna be putting in the posts and the strainers, and then I'm gonna run electric on it for now. And if I get round to it this side of winter, I might have a go at straining the stock fence myself. Otherwise, I'll get Tom back and I'll give him a hand on that. So what you've got here is it's called a spinning jenny. And it means, if you imagine trying to unroll a 600 meter uh, reel of high tensile, uh, wire like this, you'd be tangled up. Oh, I only did 20 minute sections the other side of the bank and it was a nightmare. So having this just means that you can, a bit like pulling cable uh, with first fix electrics, same sort of thing. So Tom's gone all the way up there and he's gonna pull this all the way up to where we've got the strainer right in the far corner. And that far corner is the start of the run and it's uh, gonna be a box strainer. So an H configuration with high tensile wire on a diagonal. And then about halfway along, where the fence kind of cranks to follow the hedge line. There's another big post there and our fence will go around the back of that. So that's what we're gonna do now. And once that's pulled out, I think Tom's there now. Once that's pulled out, it means that we've got a string line basically to run our posts in. So we've got all of our posts here. We'll pace it along then. And it means they're gonna end up in a perfect straight line. So this wire will actually be strained properly now. Um, as tight as it can be. It's crazy how tight you can get that high tensile wire. You might be able to hear it. It's got a proper boy on the previous fence. We ran this in barbed wire because the pigs were always going to be 
over that side up here. We've gone with plane. Then we can run electric along the front at snout height if we do leave the pigs in here. But I imagine the pigs are always going to be over the other side. Well, nice having a cab. Well, it's done and the rain has just started. We're basically gonna leave the posts in for now. I'm gonna run electric along them, probably. Although I did just talk to Tom, we, I might roll out the cheap netting and just weave it in in a few um, posts, in, like, in and out of a few posts so it self supports. I mean, the sheep, I don't think they'll to put any pressure on it. It might be an easier option than running three strands, four strands of electric all the way down. Anyway, we'll see. So we already had seven or 800 meters left of fencing, so I bought a big two pallet for it. What I'm thinking is, can I temporarily tie it up against these posts? It doesn't need to be taut, but it's gonna be a physical barrier and our sheep are pretty tame and pathetic as well when it comes to escaping. They're not gonna to be too bothered. So perhaps that's a good option. I'm going to start up by this gate post, or well, the gate post is going to go in here, but by this strainer and run it down and along and then tie in another piece, which 100 metre should get me to that corner. And that will just mean that, well, hopefully they'll stay this side of the hedge. It also means that it will, short term, the pad at the other side here will be split from this side, even though I want to double fence this hedge uh, for now. They can't get through because in the next week or two we're gonna have the rams and we need to keep the two breeds separate and the lambs separate of course so let's see how it goes well 
well it's not pretty but I think it's functional I've uh, you can see I've kind of gone behind every second or third post so it helps support it this stuff is um, the hinged joint which basically means it doesn't self support because it's going to rely on these being super sort of tent because of um, taut because they're high tensile but it will fold so it doesn't hold itself in the way that some fence styles do but as long as you have put some temporary staples in that I can pull out as long as you hold the top line up it's pretty decent right I think we've set they at least can't get through here like they used to be able to I'm going to move the U's in there for now because I think that's probably the best place to put them until the tups get here. And then when they do get here, I need to split them into the clins and the south downs, if we can find a tup in each breed. And in which case we'll have one in this field and one in the paddock. And there we go, with a few more boundary checks, it was time to let the girls in and get them all settled in, ready for some new arrivals. But that'll be in the next videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.